Hi everyone, welcome to devlog number 28. Today I'm going to be showing the correct way in the Uplinter game engine that I have found to add bullet decals or just decals in general from a raycast function onto a 3D mesh. Now, it's pretty common for people to use an object where you would position an object at the point where the raycast hits, but there's a lot of shortcomings. For instance, if your 3D character has any mesh deformation, you'd like that maybe that decal to to deform with the mesh. So, this will show you how to actually have the decal actually be applied to the material itself rather than simply being placed on top of a wall or a box. Now that works for a lot of static game objects, but if you have a game enemy that needs to have a bullet holes uh, affixed to their material, I'm going to be showing how to do this in the Uplander game engine. But first, thank you to my patrons. Everyone here is supporting the Shadows Lengthen, an open source game project that also benefits them. So if you want to use the Uplander game engine, you want to benefit yourself, Supporting me supports you because you'll have access to all the working files and also the tutorials that I'm making available to um, make games in the Uplander game engine. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Those are all the names up in lights. Those are the best people in the world. So let's jump in. Here you can see I have a very simple demo file. And um, what, what's going on here is uh, this camera point looks around like so. And I want that little white dot to appear anywhere I want on this material and it's and going to be governed entirely by the material. I'm not going to be adding an extra object or a decal to anything because that actually doesn't work if there's any deformation with the character's mesh. For example, if there's character animation. So this is what we ultimately want. We want this cube right here, which I've named cube, to have the bullet hole appear wherever I put the dot here. So you can see it's, it's placing the dot wherever I put my pointer. And that's not very exciting until you realize that it's not actually adding a mesh, it's simply doing this to the material. So if you have a character that's UV unwrapped, and then you 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 run the code here, but we reference the correct enemy here, like so, now wherever I point the, anim the arrow, the bullet decal will appear on my little three-dimensional character here. So I'm going to show how to do that now. So we have this little simple mouse setup look, and uh, let's just clear this away so it's a little less, a little less hazy. And we're going to start over from scratch. So what's what's going on here is I have a simple camera, right here, and a mouse look function. So let's let's start over from scratch. We want to make this camera able to look around. So we're going to add a mouse look function. So just go over here to mouse, and we're not going to use visibility. We're going to use look mouse look. And we'll just keep all these things at, at default for now. And then we're going to have an always sensor. So this will mean that the mouse is always looking around. So if we make this our active camera, and now we press P, look at that, the camera moves around. Now we're going to make a second function. And we're going to do just a delay function. And uh, it's going to be constantly pulsing, say, every 50 seconds. And that'll be every time we shoot the bullet. Bang, 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 every, every 50 logic ticks. And we're going to add a Python controller. We're going to call module, and we're going to call it um, test, and then we'll do uh, bullet, like that. Okay, so this is referencing a script that we haven't made yet. So let's make the script. If you jump over here and we make the text editor, we'll, we're going to go into the the text editor. There we go. We're going to go to the templates actually, and we're going to take the game logic module and let's turn on line numbers and highlighting so it's easier to see. And let's also scale this up so it's easier for everyone, to, for you all to see on the YouTubes. There we go. So let's delete all this stuff. Uh, it's very simple. We have import Blender Game Engine, and we're going to call this bullet because that's the name of our function that we're calling. And we're going to get rid of all this stuff. We don't need all this stuff right now. So we just wanted to keep doing the same thing over and over again. All right. So let's go here. And this is what I, what I just pasted in here is, let's scale this, out, scale this down here. So this is the raycast function. So what we're doing is we're saying owner, which is the controller, which is over here, and we're going to write it out again. So I'm just keeping this here for my reference because it's, it's a big long string that I don't want to write everything down. Own, and then we're going to do raycast which is saying you're casting a ray to your target. So in this case, we're going to call our target the name of the object that we're trying to hit. 
and then the 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 the, the target is the guy basically so that will be the empty which is right here so this is our empty that we added and so it'll start from here because this is running the ray cast so it's going to start from here and it's going to shoot a ray in this direction all the way through this target and onward so we're going to define the distance and we're going to say um, just none from the object from where it's coming from so that could be none the distance will say we'll shoot it 100 blender units into the distance so it's really far away and we're going to be searching for the property enemy you may notice that I'm not actually specifying here. You don't have to specify what each property is, but you need to reference them in the correct sequence. So the target is the empty in front of the camera. None is the the object that we're emitting from. And this is the distance. This is the object property that we're looking for. So any object with this property will be able to be detected by this ray cast. So for instance, if I was to go to this object, and let's add a new game property in the game logic panel here. Let's call it uh, bad guy. Instead of ad enemy, let's call it bad guy. All right, so there's the bad guy. Now this ray cast won't detect it until I make it bad guy. So let's do it that way. Now we're going to add in uh, face detection because we want to detect the faces. And this is because we need to detect the geometry. And we want to make x-rays false. X-ray basically means that you'll be able to shoot through any object into the object behind it. So for now, I'm keeping that false. And this is the one that matters the most, poly2. So poly is what type of raycast you want to, what information you want from your raycast. So if I did poly0, it would only give me the object, the coordinates and world position of that object, and the normal tangent of the, uh, the ray of the mesh that is being collided with. Polyprox is if I, so I only get those three if I do zero. If I do one, poly one, then I get the four, which is the object coordinates, normal, and the polyprox, which is a bunch of mesh properties. And if I do two, I get all of the information from the raycast, which is all four of those, plus the UV coordinate, which is the X, Y in the image editor, which is over here. So the image editor allows me to have access to where on this piece of mesh or on this grid, the ray cast is actually hitting, so I can reference a texture that way, or the coordinates of a texture, or a vector in this case. So we're going to do poly2, and mask, we don't need to do anything, so for now I'll just keep this undefined, and I'll just put that in there. And this is shooting the ray out. Now the next thing we have to do is just test it. So it's a good thing whenever you're doing your code here to just constantly keep testing and retesting. So let's turn on the console here, and I think I lost it. I did lose the console here. If you ever lose the console, by the way, it's usually in the bottom corner, but I'm just going to start up Blender again and uh, get the console back. It's, I find it faster than going into the menu and getting it. All right, so let's, let's test the code. Make this our active camera and press P. So if you see over here, we have an error. It says test has no attribute bullet. So if I go over here, bullet. We don't have that here. And that's because we didn't name this module correctly either. So if I go over to the camera, you remember I said test, not camera game logic module. So I need to change this to test. So it goes test and then bullet. So now if I run it, it should be running properly. Test has no attribute bullet. Interesting. Well, now, now I'm a little confused, I'm a little bit lost. Let's see what's going on here. The um, and this is also part of the process is just kind of debugging these problems. Let's call it testy. There may be another file that I have that's named test and that may be causing the problem. Yes, okay, so I made an error. I simply have another text file in here called test, I believe. So don't call it test, we'll call it testy, just for, so I put T-E-S-T-Y, and you can see it's not returning any errors now. If I uh, run this, you'll see there's no errors. If I print this out, actually, you'll be able to see um, the information that I'm receiving. So let's print it out. Now you can see 
over in the console, it's printing all that information, the UV coordinates, the vectors, and if I hit nothing, I get none, 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 none. So it's returning five, five different things, and we want the last one, which is the, the vector, which is 0 0.134 and all those big numbers there. So we want all that stuff. And it's working great, so we're going to just remove our print function here, because we just tested that. So we only want UV2. So I'm just going to say UV2 um, equals the ray cast that we're getting, but we, we only want the fifth value, or in this case, the fourth one in the index, because zero counts. So zero is the object, one is coordinates, normal is th so two, three, and then four. So we want the fourth value returned, or the fifth value returned, and that's UV2. So now if we print out, just for testing, let's print out UV2. And now you'll see we're going to get the uh, no coordinates unless the camera is positioned on top. Now you see it's returning the coordinates of the XYZ of the, the vector, the UV vectors. So believe it or not, that's all that you need to do in order to get the vectors. So let's switch gears now and let's make a material that will allow us to take these vectors here and convert the vector coordinates for a bullet hole. So let's make a new material and uh, let's delete this one and we're going to add a new one. We're going to call it um, bullet hole. Okay, bullet holes. All right, so here's our bullet holes. We're going to turn on nodes because we want to be able to have access to all sorts of fancy stuff. I'm going to delete the material for now and we're going to be combining two things. We're going to be combining an object lamp in the scene and we're going to be combining the UV vectors because we want the UV vectors of this material here to be affected by this these coordinates here. So we're going to add in geometry and use the UVs and we're going to add in a lamp. So to search for lamp data and that's our lamp. Now I've already added a lamp to the scene right here which is lamp number 10 and if you look at the uh, the number here, there it is. It's uh, it's a value, the energy is going to be 10. And we're going to have the RGB information of this lamp affected in the scene so that this will be tied to the material so the material's vectors will update. So let's point out that lamp. There's the lamp, point. And now we're going to go, let's go look at focus of the nodes here. And we're going to add in a couple things. We're going to add in a separate, R, separate RGB node and a combine RGB node. So we're going to go to converter we're going to combine RGB. Now, the red and the green are only the only two values. That's the X and the Y, the red and the green. So we're going to take the UVs of this, and we're going to have them affected by the UVs of this. So we're going to separate the RGB of the color of the lamp here and have this effect using math nodes, these. So first of all, I'm going to add two, because I'm going to add a one, a one a a offset, because the middle of the vectors for uh, vector graphic is 0.5. We want to have it starting at zero so we have direct control over it. Don't worry about that. Basically it means that we want our texture centered. So I'm adding a one offset. And then from there, we're going to add another add node. And this will be each one of these getting affected by the red greens of the colors in the lamp data. So green will now be this one up here, and the red one will be this one here. So let's make this a little clearer so it's easier to see. And let's 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 switch these sides so it's a little bit more clear. So what I did was I added two math nodes. This is the texture offset, and this is going to be what is affected by the red, green, blue. So the red to the red, and the green to the green. So right away, if I put this into the image output, you're going to see this weird vector coming up. And this is the vectors of the image being affected by the lamp. We can now test this and we can see what happens. Look at that. See, it's affecting the vectors. You can see the little colors are changing. But we don't want the vectors. We want the bullet hole, right? So let's add in a texture. And for my part, well, it just crashed. Let's open it back up. So we're going to add in a vector. We're going to add a texture. Input. Let's go add in a texture node input texture node. Now, we're going to take this here. That's the second time it's crashed. 
Sometimes the Blender game engine will crash. If that happens, just cut this out for a minute um, and just kind of try to do things uh, as slowly as possible. So here. Now I'm going to get my bullet hole, which I have called fire, and I'm going to plug it in right here. And if you look at, it didn't crash this time. Fantastic. Sometimes it'll do funny things like that. So it's just a black texture with a dot in the middle, and that will be our bullet hole. So you could put whatever decal you want there, and that would be your bullet hole. So now you can see down here the bullet hole exists. If I now turn on the uh, the raycast, technically we're getting the coordinates, but the coordinates are not affecting the lamp yet. The next thing we need to do is affect this lamp with the coordinates from this Python script running from the camera. So if we go back to the the camera, the script controlling the uh, the raycast, we have two things we need to find. We need to find the the cube, in this case, let's call the cube uh, bad guy. And let's give bad guy the property enemy. So going to logic, let's go to here. Oh, we call them bad guys, so let's keep looking for bad guy. And so this ray will now hit bad guy. Oh, we're in the wrong script. Let's, let's delete that for a second here. Sorry about that. So we're looking for bad guy, and we're going to print the UVs. So this is not affecting yet the lamp. To do that, we need to find the lamp in the scene. So we're going to do, we're going to write this, we're going to de declare this before our bullet function, Blender Game Engine, logic, get current with capital C, scene, and this will get the current scene. So we're going to say this is what the scene is. Then we're going to say, okay, let's find two objects in the scene. We're going to find one is the the bad guy object, which is this cube here. So we'll say scene, objects, and then we're going to reference the name, which is bad guy. So this looks in the scene, looks through the list of objects in the scene, and gets the bad guy. So let's say, okay, bad guy is now this one here. Now we also want to get the lamp, so we'll say lamp equals, and we want to find this lamp right here, which is called point with a capital P. So I could just copy and paste this, and here I'll type in P-O-I-N-T. So now that's finding the point. So now we have both objects declared over here, and actually because this is a lamp, it needs to be refreshed each time, so we're going to put this in here. You can also put both of these in here if you want, just for now, just, for, just to make things easier. Um, so the next thing we want to do after we, we now have our point, which is the lamp, and we have the bad guy, and we have the UV coordinates, let's bring it all together and say we want the point colors to become to be affected by the vectors that are coming from bad guy, or from the UV raycast here. So UV2 is re returning two vectors, it's the X and the Y. So what we'll do is we'll say, okay, lamp color is going to now equal and the color is always going to be three values. It's going to be X, red, green, and blue. But we're not affecting the blue here, so we only want the red and the green. So we'll say UV2, which is our vector for the X, and let's make it multiplied times negative 0.2. And then that'll be for the X. And we also want the first element of that sequence. Now we do the same thing but we're going to do it for the second element of the sequence, which is the the, uh, the green value, so it's this. And then the blue we don't really care about, so we could just say that's zero, like so. So this will be updating the color of the lamp, which is right here, to the UV2, and we're multiplying it by negative two to add the appropriate offset so that it looks correct in the scene. So now if I run the script, and let's make sure that the, the console is um, available while we do this, because I'm sure that there might be a bug or two. We're running the script now, and now if the mouse is over there, nope, there's no bug. So as you can see, now what's happening is the lamp is updating the color, and those coordinates are fitting exactly to the texture coordinates. Now if I look away, there's no object being hit, but if I point back here, hurrah, now we have the object being updated. So this is how you add 
uh, a material or a, um, a bullet decal directly to any object in your game. Uh, um, this actually is actually very uh, performance friendly for the Blender game engine because as you see we're using a lamp and lamps tend to slow things down but if you look at our lamp there's no specular or diffuse actually affecting the scene so essentially the lamp is turned off and we just want the lamp data. So it's very efficient. And if I run it for a character now, let's move over here. Now if we're running the object, there we go, finally. Oof. So you can see it's taking the X and the Y coordinates of the, the vector and it's placing the uh, bullet hole on the correct point. So there are some limitations with this method. Um, for instance, if you are using a character with bilateral sym symmetry and you're mirroring the X and the Y of the, uh, the bullet decal, that means that like on the left hand side and the right hand side this bullet decal would uh, be featured on the same point. So for example, if this was literally on top of that and now I run it, you'd see that the bullet decal is now appearing on the same spot. So that doesn't limit you though. If you have something like this, there's a way you can get around it. You can use light map uh, pack. So you could use um, like this, which essentially gives everything a unique square. It may give you some deformed resu results at times, but now there's no overlap. The issue with this is that there might be, at each seam there might be a um, an offset here where you kind of clipped, clipping the bullet hole a little bit with each offset. So in that instance, what you could do is you could use smart UV project, but use a separate UV layer. So suppose this is your texture, but what if there is some sort of overlap and you don't want that to happen for the character? Uh, you can use smart UV project or you could use um, smart UV project for this second material. And then over here, you would just point to that UV map. So now this one's being used. So though, even though if we're on this one and let's just reset all the UVs so that they're all on top of each other like so. Now if I run the script you'll see the bullet holes, well, they're going to appear on the wrong one because we're I'm using the coordinates from UV map 1 but if I use UV map, the original UV map here, you'll see that every bullet hole appears on every single square because in the vectors here there it, it's, it's, it's entirely covering the entire body. So if you look at it this way, it's a little funny but we can just very quick, quickly reference a different UV map uh, in our 3D model here. So now when I render it like so, the bullet holes will appear in the correct spot. Now it's obviously, you have to have the, the current UV map active. The top layer will always be the one that the uh, UV detect for uh, Raycast functions with. So in that case I could duplicate this one and now this will appear correctly. So that's how you would use it. So wh whenever you want to reference a specific hit point on a model, make sure that the top UV map is going to be your decal map, where the decals get placed so that when you do a seam or something like that, there's no overlap. And there you go. So this is uh, a very simple example of how to create uh, hit bullet detection. And what's wonderful about this is once your, your character has this as part of their shader, you can actually uh, just take this and just package it like so and now this is a bullet decal that you can add to any character in your game provided that you have in the scene this lamp here and um, you're using this correct little Python function here. So I'm gonna make this available to all my patrons and uh, as a fun little bonus I'm now going to show the, the wrong way to do this. So if you've stuck around for this long congratulations you're going to see some game footage of the shadows lengthen where um, my original exploration into this was using the hit object with Raycast and then positioning an object on the 3D character. And why, why, although attractive and seemingly logical, is actually kind of a, um, a mistake because you can't use it for a 3D deformed character. You can't have the bullet hole or the decal track with the uh, movement of a deforming mesh. So I'm going to show you what that looks like now. So here's the preloader. Yes, there's a preloader in the Uplander game engine for the, the shadows lengthen. I'm very proud of it. Um, and here's the game menu. So we're going to actually just use the quick start here. So we're going to jump right in and uh, into the open world. So 
this is going to load in a brief testing bed for the game, and um, the monster will load into the game, and then I will be able to use the projectile weapon, and you'll be able to see that her um, the decals currently being positioned on her have not been updated yet to this new uh, X and Y coordinate system where it adds the decal specifically to the material, but rather adds an overlaying mesh to the character. So let's jump right into the house here. And from the inventory I'll pick up the, uh, the handgun. And let's go inside here. So when the sun sets here the vampire will appear. As a fun little aside here, this is the open world that has been procedurally generated for this, this run of the game. And uh, here's the uh, the bathroom, <laughs> little tiny bathroom nook. All right, we're gonna go downstairs. She should be appearing in a moment. There she is. Hello. So if she sees me, she's going to shout at me. But I'm gonna shoot her now. And you can see the bullet decal that's being added to her is actually uh, it, it 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 appears uh, fairly convincing. But you can see it's also kind of floating in a very mesmerizing way above her skin. So if I hit, oop, and she got me. So. And now I've lost the game. So this is the current system that I had for the game, but I've gone through the exploration to find this more beneficial and, and performance-friendly way where it doesn't add an object, but it specifically...